video of how I made the Vogue V9357 dress. This is actually my first time making a full dress and I'm really happy with how it turned out. tracing out the pattern pieces using a washable marker and marking guides on the skirt front to match the design on both sides. This pattern has a seam running down the middle and this was my first time pattern matching and I have no idea what I'm doing but fortunately it worked out okay in the end. I'm using a quilting cotton that I had in my stash, and I really like how the plaid highlights the bias cut detail in the bodice. I use the size 14 pattern, which fits my waist perfectly, but I am quite short at 5 foot 1, so ended up using the size 10 yoke top, and took 2 inches off the bodice front and back, which Still ended up having some fit issues that you'll see later on, even though I made three mock-ups before cutting this out and didn't notice any issues. When cutting out the pattern, I didn't cut the front skirt seams all the way, just in case the pattern matching needed adjustments, but it ended up being almost exactly spot on, which was a miracle since it was my first time. came to visit because she has to be involved with everything. It was at this moment I realized she matches the plaid because, of course, everything revolves around her. Okay, get out of here. Here I am pattern matching the bodice front. I had planned to do the same with the back but had a catastrophe with cutting out one side backwards, so here I am triple checking and making sure it is going to lay the way I intended to before cutting it out. I'm using 100 pins to make sure it lines up correctly and doesn't shift when I start cutting. Here I am making the inside pockets out of the leftover scraps that were supposed to be the back. Uh, I only had two yards of this fabric and didn't have enough to fix the back issue, so pockets it is. I am cutting the accent pieces out of black quilting cotton, including making the back a solid color, which wasn't my first choice, but it still turned out great. This cotton is a little thin, but it looks okay when it's all put together. I love the waistband of this pattern. It is the perfect shape and very flattering. I am tracing and cutting a size 10 yoke using a chalk pencil. I think the different size between the yoke and the bodice contributed to some of the fit issues that I had later on. I am transferring and marking the back darts. I'm not sure about the dart at the neckline. It still has some puckering and I'm not quite sure how to fix that. And here is the cat lounging in her pile of scraps after I finished cutting out all the pieces. And it's time to sew. I started with pinning and sewing all of the darts and tying off the ends. pressed all of the darts in the direction the pattern indicated. I'm using a tailor's ham to get around all of the curves, which is extremely useful. I've never used this before, and it makes it so much easier to press. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I attached the yoke to the bodice front. Then pin and attach the side pieces to finish the full bodice front. Next is attaching the bodice front to the bodice back at the shoulder seams and the side seams. And this time I'm using the sleeve roll to press those seams open. Then I assembled the waistband pieces. I added fusible interfacing to the front waistband and then pressed those seams open and pressed in the seam allowance of the waistband lining. Then attached the waistband and lining to the bodice with about a thousand pins. guessed it, more pressing. Since I didn't cut the skirt front, I basted a guide to help with assembly. I am pattern matching the skirt front seams with about a thousand pins to make sure the pieces don't shift. I am using French seams for the skirt, so that is why I am starting with the wrong side together. sewing the seam allowance using the basted pattern line as my guide. Then I pressed the seam inside out and am sewing the final seam with right sides together. This is my first time pattern matching a seam and French seaming a seam. So I am checking how it went and it looks great! Happy little dance! Next, I'm pressing in the seam allowance for the big front pocket and using a clapper to make sure those seams lay nice and flat. Aligning the outer front pocket with the markings on the skirt pattern. Aligning the top and side notches where the pattern indicates. Then aligning the corner with the mark indicated on the pattern. It has the pocket not laying completely flat against the skirt front which leaves a space at the pocket opening. Then I edge stitch the pocket to the skirt front and baste the free edges left on the pocket to the seam allowance. And repeat for the other side. I'm 
also doing inner pockets for this dress. So here I am pinning each pocket to each side so I don't get them mixed up. I'm doing French seam pockets, which is also my first time doing this. So here I am pinning the pocket wrong sides together to the side seam. Then I press the pocket so that the right sides are together and sew along that seam. And repeat the same for the other three pockets. Then I do a French seam for the whole side of the skirt, pinning wrong sides together around the pocket and the side seam. I clip the raw edges and snip into that pocket to give it space so that when I turn and press it and seam the final French seam, it all lays nice and flat. Then it's time to attach the skirt to the bodice with all of the pins. The pattern didn't specifically say to do this, but I'm notching the waistband on each side, which I don't know if it's right because again, I don't know what I'm doing, but it felt right and it helped the waistband to lay flat. Now I'm doing a French seam for the skirt back in the same way I did the skirt front, except I'm only doing the lower half of the skirt below where the zipper is going to go. Now I'm basting the seam where the zipper is going to be inserted. The pattern didn't specifically say to interface that part, but I did it anyways and it did seem to help. And here I am hand basting in the zipper before installing it using an invisible zipper foot. I should have used a black zipper, but I don't have one and I wasn't intending the back to be a solid black color, but it's an invisible zipper so it doesn't show anyways and I went with it. And with the zipper in, I did a fitting and noticed there was a little something off with the yoke at the top. Okay, this is very confusing. And I did a fitting where the yoke fits, but the bodice front is taking almost two inches off. How is that possible? I unstitched the yoke from the bodice and measured out the distance that aligns with the center from. And I'm going to try a new stitching line. The waist fits. This cannot go any narrower. And this Supposedly it will work. We'll try it. To finish the skirt, I pressed in the seam allowance with a rolled hem and stitched that in by machine. I do not enjoy hand sewing seams, so there was no way I was going to do this whole hem by hand. I am finishing the arms and the neckline with a bias binding tape. I would have used black, but I didn't have enough left over, so I am using a dark gray that I had in my stash. Then I pressed in all the binding in the arms and neckline so that it would lay flat. I also understitched this into the seam allowance. 
in preparation for my least favorite part, which is hand finishing the binding to the inside of the seat. final step is to hand finish the binding to the inside of the arms and neckline. I also did the same with the waistband. And to show why I hate this step so much, here it is in real time. No thank you. And with that finally done, the dress was finished. Thank you so much for watching me make my first dress. It's definitely not perfect, and someone with more experience would probably know how to avoid some of the fit issues, but I really enjoyed learning new techniques, and I love how it came out. Mm -hmm.